All right, so let us move our attribute links. So now let us move on configuring our second floor switch ports. So right click on the second floor switch and click edit attributes. Then double click on the switch port configuration value. Okay, so this is our switch port configuration table for the second floor switch. So we need to look all the active ports where the workstations or servers are connected at. And it shows that all our tech workstations are connected to P0, P1, P10, P11, and P12. So let's go ahead and change the VLAN parameters of those ports to VLAN 30 because that's what we assign for our tech department. So for port name P0 under VLAN parameters, click default, then click edit. Then change the port VLAN identifier to 30 and the supported VLANs to identifier 30. Then click OK. Then P1. So change the identifier to 30. And for the supported VLAN, change it to 30, then click OK, then click OK again. So 10, 11, and 12, so we need to change our ports 10, 11, and 12 to VLAN identifier 30. So go ahead and click Edit, then set it to 30, then the default to VLAN 30. Click OK then p11 okay set the identifier to 30 then the supported vlans to identifier 30 then finally it's the p12 so go ahead and select 30 then set this to identify 30 then click ok then click ok again Okay, so let us scroll down further. What are the other ports that shows where the servers are connected at? Okay, so it shows that for the text server, it's connected at P14. And for the sales server, it's connected at P15. And then the billing server to P2. Okay, so let us change the VLAN parameters for the text server to VLAN identifier 30 so that's P14 okay so set it to 30 and then set it to 30 again then click OK and then the other one is P15 for the cell server so let's click the default value of the P13's VLAN parameter and then set it to 20 and then the supported VLAN to 20 then click OK so our billing server shows that it is connected to P2 in our second floor switch so scroll up and change the default parameters to 10 then change the identifier to 10 for our billing server then click OK to save the changes. P13 is connected to our first floor switch, so that means our P13 is a trunk link. So let us set the VLAN parameters for our P13 and change the port type to trunk since it's a trunk link. Then let us leave the VLAN identifier to 1 and set the supported VLANs to and let us set the supported VLANs to, to 2 identifiers since we have to support the billing department and the sales department. That's why we've selected 10 and 20. So go ahead and click OK to save the changes. Then click OK again. OK, another port that is connected in our second floor switch is our tech server at P14. So go ahead and change the VLAN parameters to 30 since it, since it is a tech department and change the identifier to 30 again for the supported VLANs then click OK and for our cell server it's connected at P15 so change the default value to 20 since it's for sales All right 20 then click OK 
then click OK again. Alright, so our billing server is connected at P2. So scroll up and change the default billing parameters to 10 since it's for billing department. Alright, then click OK. Our P3 port in second floor switch is connected to the P4 port at building 2 switch. That means our P3 is a trunk link that connects to the building 2 switch. So let's go ahead and change the default parameters for our P3 to trunk port. Then let us just leave the VLAN identifier to 1. And for the supported VLANs, we have to set it to 3 since we have to support all the 3 identifiers for all the departments. Since at the building 2 network, all our departments are located in one switch are connected in one switch so set it to 10 for billing 20 for sales and 30 for the tech department then click OK then click OK again to save the changes seems like we've finally completed configuring all the ports in our second floor switch alright so go ahead and click OK to save and close the switch port configuration table and same thing with our second floor attributes to save the changes that we did